Hi everyone and welcome to the next video tutorial which is going to be focused on implementing Django Defender which is a very useful package for preventing brute force attacks. So as you can see here in the basic readme at the start here, so we can see here that this uh, package is going to prevent brute force login attempts and a very useful thing about Django Defender, it can also go ahead and whitelist and blacklist users as well. And it can also do that according to IP addresses as well. So it's a very useful package. Of course, there's a lot of custom uh, modifications that you can go ahead and add, but just to keep it brief and simple and introduce you to Django Defender, I'm just gonna show you the whole basic overview of it. All right. So what we're going to do first of all is we need to check the prerequisites for this video tutorial. So you need to ensure that you have a basic Django application up and running and live. So as you can see, I have one running that just says hello world. So it's very basic and very simple. So what you wanna do is you wanna ensure that you have that application running. Next thing you wanna do is head over to Django Defender. So I will include the link for the package in the description below along with the documentation as well, which is going to help you if you want to add some custom modification as I mentioned earlier. So what we can do is install this package. So you can copy that, head over to your application and make sure you're in your virtual environment. Go ahead and say pip install Django Defender and you want to press enter. There we go, so that's been set up. Now what we need to do is head over to the documentation and we can scroll down. Now as you scroll down, you can see here um, how it will look generally. So we'll be able to track blocked users, track access attempts, check the block logins, which IPs are blocked, which users are blocked and which ones we want to unblock. Okay, but this is a lot of advanced concepts that you'll have to research on your own. But I'm just showing you the capability that Django Defender actually has. Okay, so we can see the installation guide here. So we've gone ahead and installed Django Defender, perfect. What we can do now is scroll down and we want to go ahead and add in the installed apps. So that in the package for uh, the package Django Defender it has the app called Defender, so we can copy that. And you wanna head over to your settings.py file. So let's head on there and right at the bottom, we can just add it here accordingly. So Defender, so that's the, the installed app that we need to add in. Great. Next thing that we wanna do is we need to add in some middleware. So the failed login middleware so that it can keep track of all those failed login attempts. So you can copy that and paste it right at the bottom of your middleware. So right at the end would be the safest place to put it. So you wanna add that right down there at the bottom. Perfect. Next thing you wanna do is we want to add in the URL for Django Defender, which is known as admin forward slash Defender. So as we can see here, if we want to manage the block users via the Django admin, then we need to add this in. And we wanna check this on our admin page accordingly. So we can go ahead and copy the following. And you wanna head on to your main projects urls.py file here and you can just add this in like so. All right, now something to note, it does make use of the include function here. So make sure that you have an include function in place here to include all of those URLs that are part of this Django Defender package or to be more specific, this Defender apps URLs, okay? So those are the three the things you need to do. So let's start from the top. So go ahead and add Django Defender known as Defender to installed apps. Then you wanna add the failed login middleware and you wanna do this and set it at the bottom of your middleware. And then you wanna go ahead and add in the, the URL for the Django uh, Defender admin page. Okay, and this is going to link automatically within our Django admin. So you don't need to worry about switching URLs. You can just go to the Django admin by default and you'll see the Django Defender app and model all automatically set and in place and registered that's why we need to add this in. So it makes it a lot easier for us. So you don't need to be swayed by this defender admin comment, all right? But you can anyway go to that URL if you actually wanna see it. Um, it does give a little bit more clarity in terms of blocked users. So you can still visit that URL there, but we can just keep it straightforward and go to the normal URL to see access attempts for now. Right, so anyway, what we wanna do is go ahead and test this out with our admin page. Now, before we can do that, we need to create a super user. So go ahead and create your super user. So you can run python manage.py create super user. Make sure you choose something that you'll know. So I'm gonna say admin 
um, let's say one o one o seven. So admin one o seven. Leave the email. Turn a password. Perfect. And you can run your server now. Go ahead and do that. Perfect, we can head on back. All right, so we're on our application here. Now what we want to do is we want to test these brute force attacks. So we are going to take the role of the attack itself. So we're going to be the brute force attacker and we want to test this out on our Django admin page, which is now integrated with our admin defender functionality already in place. So what you can do is first of all, make sure you have um, your application open here in the web browser. So mine's just a hello world application. And then you want to open the exact same application in incognito mode. Okay, and the reason for this is we want to do some real-time sort of testing, you could say. So if you're using Google Chrome, you can click on the three dots on the right and say new incognito window. And what you can do is just simply copy your local host in your normal Google web browser and incognito mode, you can just paste that in. Like so. And then what we can do is just move it to the side. So on the right, we have the incognito page. On the left, we have our normal application running in Google Chrome, in not in incognito mode. So make sure you've got that. Next, you want to head over to your admin page. So first of all, we want to head over here to our admin page. So on the right of incognito mode, just go ahead and say forward slash admin. Okay, and you want to go ahead and log in with your admin user's credentials. So the one you just created. So go ahead and do just that. Right, so once you've entered in your credentials, go ahead and log in. Okay, and now we can see here, we now have a nice tab here for access attempts here accordingly. All right, so you can go ahead and click in Defender here. So we have uh, a test here that I did earlier today. So I'm just going to remove these for now. So you probably will have only one, okay? And that was just as of this moment because we just logged in. With admin 107, I did have a test earlier, but to make it clear, I'm just gonna delete everything for now, okay? So delete everything there for now because we actually wanna do the real test now. So make sure everything's deleted here in your incognito mode. So we're gonna see all the access attempts made. Now we're going to head over to our admin page here on our normal Google uh, browser here that is not in incognito mode. And what you wanna do is you want to go ahead here on the left and you wanna try, and we're gonna try now and brute force this account. So let's say by some chance we obtain the username of an admin user on Django admin. We know an administrator of a website, we know their Django admin username, but we don't know their password. So we wanna try now and kind of hack, you could say, into it by using brute force attacks. So take a look at what we're doing. So I know the username, so I know it is admin 107. So I know that is the username. Now let's go ahead and try and brute force this with a password. So let's put in one password attempt. So let's try and brute force it. Okay, log in. Okay, it fails. So let's refresh here in incognito mode. All right, there was one password attempt here. Okay, someone tried to log into admin 107 with the username. Okay, from the IP address. So if you have this actually on an application um, on a live server, you'll be able to see the IP address, the attempt time. And if you move here to the right, you can see that login attempt was invalid. So we have the X there for invalid. And we can see the path where they tried that attempt as well. Next thing we can do is try this again. So we're gonna head over to the password and we're gonna try and hack into it again. Okay. Okay, it failed, let's refresh. Second attempt, we can now see that that one was a fail as well. Someone tried to log into admin 107, that was a fail. Let's try this again. Add in one more time, log in. Okay, that was a fail, refresh. Okay, we can see we have another failed login. It also gives us a time as well. And we can see that that was someone trying to log into admin 107 accordingly and we can just move across and see that was a failure. Now eventually this is going to expire, so let's keep on trying this as many times as we can. And there we go. So we can see there that it finally gave in after attempt four. So we can see here account locked, too many login attempts, please try again later. So we can see that we are now logged out of our admin page. So this is technically something that can be integrated across to the default Django user functionality. 
to prevent this occurring with user accounts as well. So if someone happens to know someone's username and attempts to brute force into their account, that account is going to be locked to protect that user. And also, as you can see, our admin uses itself. All right, now, of course, what you can do is you can go ahead and look into the documentation. Um, let me maximize this now. You can, of course, scroll down here. You can see we can do a few things. So what we can do, of course, is we can accordingly go ahead and clean up everything accordingly with the Django Defender attempt expiration. And if that's not um, specified, it will be 24 hours by default. Now, in terms of this account lock too many attempts part, this I think is set by default to five or 10 minutes. And then you'll see here it will become available again. Now, if you want to expedite that process and make it go faster, what you can do is scroll down here and you'll see a whole set of properties. So this is the really cool part if you want to customize Django Defender. So you can see here we have a Defender login failure limit. Now, of course, the default is not three, okay? It took uh, four attempts, you could see here. So of course, it was four in our case. We can see we have a Defender login limit uh, username, okay? So we can see it based on a username itself. We can set it based on IP address. Another cool thing is we can also go ahead and set a cool off time now by default it is I believe five or 10 minutes. Okay, and what we can do is we can make that longer or shorter. So we can set that in minutes, seconds or hours. So we can decide what we want to go ahead and set that off accordingly as But as we can see here, it's set into minutes. So you're just going to have to um, go ahead and convert it to uh, hours or minutes if you want to go ahead and change it to a different time accordingly. Another cool thing that you can do is you can add in a Defender Lockout template. That's something else you can add in. So you can add in a fancy page here. Um, maybe you want to add in a, an icon of a lock. And what you can also do is you can go ahead and add in the cool off time seconds, the cool off time minutes and also the failure limit here. So the number of failures before you actually get blocked. So it's just telling you in advance. So the next time you were to go ahead and try and attempt this, that it's going to tell you and inform you so that you're aware of that itself. All right. So that's it guys on Django Defender. So a bit brief there. I just wanted to give you introduction to it. So it's a very useful package. As you can see, a lot of things you can go ahead and do with it. Of course, it's too much to cover in one video, but you generally get the idea of the capability of Django Defender. But at least now you have an idea and that you've learned how to prevent brute false login attempts and how you can actually track this. So you can track it in your admin page and go ahead and check it out and see how it works from a common standpoint. All right. So that's it, guys, on Django Defender. All right. So, of course, as always, thank you for the support and see you next time.